Hello, I'm Dr. Catherine Horton. Before I start with today's working group, I just would like to check the sound uh, to avoid that it's um, sabotaged. Okay, I think you can hear me okay. So um, what I would like to do is, um, in case you're wondering what all these different broadcasts are about, I just would like to explain the Global Crime Fighters is um, a very gen um, generic and very kind of lecture-like uh, presentation. The working group is really hands-on information about stuff that matters right now for court cases for immediate survival. So it's really meant to be uh, something that you can follow um, when these episodes come out and it's directly relevant to what you might be doing now or next for your court case of to fight back against this criminality. So it's less uh, you know, lecture-like and it's much more focused on hands-on stuff and actual you know, real names, real cases and stuff to do right now. So the working group works best if you really take part in everything uh, that I'm doing and try to um, follow it, you know? So anyway, this is just to explain why there are so many different broadcasts. Um, so regarding hands-on information or hands-on um, things to do, what I would like to start with is the affidavit because there have been some developments. I was amazed. I've just released the affidavit template on the 17th of November and already, you know, um, I already um, had a submission and uh, submissions coming in and uh, me being in discussions on, you know, how to tidy up bits and pieces. So people already got onto the case and started, uh, you know, uh, writing the affidavits and that I find absolutely amazing. I also would like to say if you are being tortured or you are being uh, harassed by these psychopathic degenerates, what you should do is you should take, I always say, you know, anger is better than depression and anger is much better than learned helplessness but you can either bottle up the anger and be just upset about these utter whacked out morons who stalk you or you can take your anger and channel it into something an actual real life activity that helps us to have these people arrested and you know you know what i want i want them put to death for crimes against humanity so the more you can uh channel uh whatever they are doing you know turn it around and channel it into actual steps that you're taking against them, the better it will be for you and for all of us, because it means that what they are doing is they are generating their own downfall. The more they work, the more we fight back and we double, you know, double down on the things that we are doing to fight these bastards. So anyway, um, it's also getting very urgent. So things will be speeding up over the coming days and weeks as we are approaching the end of the year. And it would be really nice if you haven't knuckled down to uh, hands-on stuff that you can do to fight back as a victim or to help others and get them on board and teach them what works and what doesn't. Now is the time to do it, okay? So please, let's get going. So your first, if you are a victim by now, what I would say, your very first port of call should be uh, the affidavit template, okay? So let me share my screen and um, take you there. And then I would like to talk about a couple of additions. So you will reach this affidavit template if you go to my website, stop007, the very first link, new and final affidavit form is out with explanatory notes. You click on that and here you are. I have now, um, I can report, you, you already, if you've been here, you will uh, remember this video. This is a, um, a video, you can click on it and watch it here. This is a almost two and a half hour video with a detailed guidance about how to fill out the affidavit template that you can see in the background. What I would like to say is I have now, you will find the very same video at the bottom down here and I have included detailed contents with timestamps, okay? So if you're watching it on this page, you will have to start the video you will have to look at the time page. For example, if you want to hear more about the author's cross check, it's 32 minutes and nine seconds. So you actually take the time, the time bar, and you go to 32 minutes um, here. And, um, you know, you start watching. And then you will start hearing everything about the, um, the author's uh, uh, cross check that will follow here. You know, and this is this is the the author's cross check. So in the video, I've now muted it so that it doesn't disturb us. But now, um, in the background, you can hear me explain things and how this is to be filled out. So you can navigate it like that. Or if jumping to the timestamps is too bothersome, what you do is you do you go to the video, you you press play so that it starts playing, okay, and then you do a right click, and then this uh, menu opens up. 
and then you can press copy video URL. Okay. And then you can stop this um, video again. You have to, I think you have to um, make it start playing for this field to activate. So again, right click, copy video URL, you open a new tab. And then if you paste it in and go directly to YouTube, the advantage is, and now you will understand why I said all that, the advantage is that you can scroll down and you will find the contents listing here in the descriptions. And now the minute mark is a is an actual bookmark. So if you click on this, you can see it's a blue highlight. If you click here, the video, sorry, I have to skip the advert. But the video will then by itself jump to 32 minutes, nine seconds. Okay, so if you watch this whole thing on YouTube, you can use these timestamps as bookmarks. So I can just click here and then it jumps to this time uh, time window, okay? So you don't have to watch this two hour um, video in one go, or if you want to remind yourself where certain passage is, you can just read, you know, here for example, is the how to fill out the affidavit template, blah, blah, blah. This is here, the explanatory notes. So I have made these big um, headings like that with the stars, and then you can see all the different, um, you know, subsections on how to fill out the affidavit template and just read through. And if you, for example, want guidance on the body diagrams, you just click on this link and the video jumps straight away to the body diagrams. And they are right here. Okay. So you can see it's being highlighted in the text and I explain how to do all that. So this is to navigate it. Um, but now I want to go back and I want to show, oops, sorry. I want to go back to the tab and I want to show you another edition. And this comes from one of the victims who has already filled out the affidavit and sent it to me. If you go to the affidavit page, there's a new edition that benefits all the victims who are in Belgium, in France, or other French-speaking territories. So you remember the previous downloads were here. Uh, if, you, if you're a victim and want to fill out the affidavit, please download these three forms. You fill out the open office version. The PDF is just for viewing. You can't fill that out. That's just so that you can look at it. And the explanatory notes are for your own backup. Okay, so you, you have a, a legally binding document about how your affidavit is going to be used. Now, the new edition is now this section, right? So this is a new document that you can download. If you are a victim in Belgium, in France, or other French-speaking countries, when you go to have your signature witnessed by a person entitled to administer oaths, uh, if they are in a French-speaking region, because let's face it, the, face it, the French are a bit arsy sometimes, they might insist that the form is in French. Whatever they sign, the form has to be in French. If you look at the English version, uh, the last page of the affidavit template uh, is this. Um, it's basically the statement of truth that you believe it all to be true and you would declare that under penalty of perjury, the date, your signature and your printed name. And then it's there, um, you know, um, the, the official's address and um, county and can, or, or place and country, date, their printed full name and their signature. It's not very hard, but still, French-speaking officials insist that this should be in French. So what you do, it's very simple. Um, uh, the victim who ran into this problem translated the affidavit, the last page, and it's now uploaded here for you. So if you're in a French speaking region, please just download this. It's a one pager. If you click on it, okay, this will open. Um, and it looks like that in French. Okay. The entire thing in, in French. But now what I ask you to do is please enter here the very same document authentication code that you chose on the main affidavit. You can just highlight this thing, okay? Please delete the um, highlighting and the square brackets. And if you chose, I don't know, you know, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, as your um, document authentication code, then please type that in. By the way, don't choose that number, please, you know, choose something more random. But anyway, just make sure it agrees because then I can put it straight with the affidavit and it's clear that this goes with your affidavit in the French version as well. Okay. So then once you've corrected um, this and put in your document authentication code, you print this off and this is the form you take along for this official to sign. 
and if he signs it in French, that's fine, okay? Because it's here, it's on the official web page. Um, you know, it's on the official web page. We all agree what the content is and the purpose. And if your statement of truth is just expressed in your national language, that's okay. That's not a biggie, okay? And uh, that's not going to change the content of your affidavit. And then I also want to remind you, should this website be hacked or be down or should something happen to it, um, it's backed up on the jointinvestigation.org website. Okay, so jointinvestigation.org, the JIT takes you here. That's my investigative team. And here under appeals, you click on the appeals tab, the appeals for affidavit is found here. The very same documents, very same information, the text is, is identical, and you will find this French document down here. And again, you will find the full content listing just like on the stop007.org webpage. Okay, so it's exactly the same. So this is what I wanted to say, first of all. And um, I really encourage you to get going with your affidavit. I know it's 94 pages, but most of it is just tick boxes. And let's be honest, most of us kind of enjoy, you know, filling out surveys sometimes and, uh, you know, just go through. And then also I want to say, um, this is still work in progress. I know from my own experience, if you start ticking stuff and you get prompted with these questions of, oh, if, did you ever have VIP stalkers? Or did you have ever any housebreaking with, um, you know, vandalism and housebreaking without vandalism and this sort of stuff? Of course, you're thinking back through your case and you're prompted and you think, oh yeah, there was this case and that case. Now these memory prompts are incredibly valuable. And the most valuable thing is if you just, as soon as you think of an incident, you know, you open another um, open office write document. And then as these things occur to you, you just write in bullet points the, you know, some memory um, uh, jogger for you to remember that incident. Because once we have finished this um, quick survey and we filed it in court and we proven that these crimes exist in every country on a massive scale, the next step is to go into detail where we're talking about what precisely is being done uh, to people and by whom. So I want you to open already now this, uh, you know, a, a, an open office write document, just a simple word document and start writing as you're filling out the affidavit template, start writing down in bullet points, all the events that you remember and everything that you remember on the spot, like roughly which day was it, what exactly happened, any odd details you remembered, because then once you've already sketched out all these things that you are referring to in your tick box survey <clears throat> um, affidavit, okay, <coughs> sorry, you know, once you've sketched that out, it will be much easier to write a long version in full sentences for your own court case. And at some point, you will have to write that detailed affidavit in order to get um, compensation for it. You know, I really doubt that people say, oh, yes, we admit we've all been a bunch of Nazi psychopaths. Here's $5 million for everything that you've lost and suffered. You, we really have to work hard to get the, uh, that compensation, okay? So you will have to prove in detail what happened to you. So if you now start um, start with the easy bit, the tick box survey, and then every single time you remember an incident, you already write it down in bullet points, I promise you writing the long affidavit will be much easier. And then the other thing you should also open is, so one Word document for bullet points as you remember stuff. And also, you know, sometimes maybe you're cleaning the house or hoovering or I don't know what, you know, standing under the shower and you remember an incident. Well, you know, quickly after you're out of the shower, make a note in that document so that you really remember all the things that have been done to you and you can write one big compendium. Also, if you remember perpetrators or names or companies that were involved, very important. So alongside this document, this is for jogging your memory, what you should also open is a perpetrator list. And if you remember, the very first draft of the affidavit had a perpetrator list. And then because I'm now alone running this entire thing, I chickened out. I cannot at this point handle detailed named perpetrators alone. <clears throat> alone. I need backup for that. I really need a professional team. So 
and push that back for now. It's not necessary for right now, but then in the second uh, instance, when I finally assemble to put together a professional team, you know, who, which includes actual professional investigators with, uh, you know, counterterrorism experience and policing experience, I want to have all the fucking names of these bastards. Okay. And we have to get onto that because this is a global network. They, are killing us they're killing our families our pets and they are killing children they kill people in elderly homes they kill everybody they possibly can these people are psychopaths extremely dangerous criminals and serial killers so once you've bumped into them the last thing you must do with a psychopath is ever let this person out of your gaze right first of all if you avert your gaze it's like a sign of weakness but second of all these people are total danger. They have been throughout the ages, and psychopathy and soci uh, sociopathy are actually the the most dangerous mental health disorders. They're actually the only ones that truly, really count, you know. And it will not surprise you uh, to hear that this is actually uh, precisely the the sort of mental disorders that are completely ignored, or to a very large part ignored by actual psychiatry, you know. So what has happened is that they turned the system around because they got criminals and psychopaths into psychiatry, and I'll talk about it later, they turned it around and they are not, uh, you know, uh, confining to psychiatry, the really dangerous people, they're going after victims. So this is this topsy-turvy world that you get every single time when you have deep capture. Of course, when criminals run the show, Okay, criminals will be fine and innocent victims will be arrested. And it doesn't matter where the deep capture occurs. You know, uh, if, if the deep capture is obviously in the police, right, the, the criminals are running the police, then criminals out in the street will have a heyday and innocent people will be incarcerated in jail. That's what we're seeing everywhere. That is a telltale sign of deep capture. And similarly, if criminals are running um, the judiciary, you know, criminals will be get, will get away scot free before a judge, and innocent people will be charged with ludic ludicrous crap that will be blown out of proportion. Now, that's exactly what we're seeing. Okay, but this is not surprising. This is to be expected, and that's okay for now, right? But we have to turn the system back around. Okay, so for that, we need to find every single one of these psychopaths. And the way psychopaths work, and this is why I want to do today's episode, um, I'm, that's why I want to do today's episode focusing specifically on psychopaths, is that they use their own mental degeneracy as a competitive advantage against you. Okay, and even though their brain is highly deficient compared to us, highly destructive, and psychopaths have never ever in the history of the world generated anything good for society, you know, still they consider themselves to be gods because as a result of their mental uh, disorder, um, and they will just uh, try to finish you off, you know, and whatever little advantage they have, they will use it to the max to destroy you and to kill you if, if they can. Okay, so you have to be aware of what their competitive advantage is, how they are playing it, and how they're using what they consider to be your weakness against you. And today I want to talk about how your weakness is not actually a weakness for society. It's actually the glue that holds society together. However, when you're up against a psychopath, you have to be very careful that he doesn't exploit something that society needs from you, and that that's why you have it genetically that he doesn't, he or she doesn't exploit that against you in a very malicious way. And I'll try to <clears throat> teach you the sort of tricks, how to recognize a psychopath, how to meet a psychopath, and how to gang up on a psychopath and finish him or, or her off, okay? And this is very, very important. And do not be mistaken about psychopaths, okay? Uh, when you caught them, when you cornered them, they will pretend to have a lot of pity for their victims, but in actual fact, the only pity a psychopath ever has, even when he has, you know, loved ones and a wife and a husband or children, the pity is never for the others, even when it's the, old, the own children. The pity is only ever for the psychopath him or herself. Okay? And you have to know that. You have to have studied psychopaths enough so that you are not fooled by the final, 
you know, grand show of pity and, and uh, you know, showing remorse because it will be entirely fake. It will be a show put on to get out <clears throat> of the situation and then hopefully kill you later, you know. So you have to know this sort of stuff. But anyway, let's get down to the nitty and gritty um, of this. So, um, you know, just know what you should do as a victim. First is write your affidavit ASAP. Um, have, uh, you know, a, a, um, a page where you are just jumbling together all the incidents as they occurred, as you remember them, just to jog your memory later when you write them up in great detail. Then also have a list of perpetrators and your list of perpetrators, <clears throat> excuse me, should also involve, um, include all the companies involved in your targeting. If you have come across companies, especially when they are large companies or companies listed on the stock market, Get coming <clears throat> across those, those is really worth gold, excuse me. <coughs> I spent a lot of time talking today and now I'm just, I'm just at the end, but I have to get this information out as long as it's fresh in my memory. So dealing with psychopaths, let's get on to that. Now, I would like to flash a couple of um, news bites up um, and I want to discuss them as training, okay, as actual hands-on training to discover the tricks pulled by psychopaths all along. And these tricks uh, you have to, um, you know, wisen up to, and uh, you have to recognize them from now on. If you don't, they'll kill you. They're literally, this is what will kill you, these tricks. So let's get into them. Um, number one, I would like to, um, let me uh, close a couple of windows so that I can actually get onto this. I would like to show you a couple of news bites, okay? Now, um, this is a very cheap trick played by psychopaths. Um, let me share my screen so that you can see uh, the news article. Um, okay, this is a news bite that somebody tweeted at me today. And it said, sorry, this is all adverts. The Daily Mail is always full of adverts. So um, let's see. The titles are reads, <clears throat> experts, claim the only way to improve privacy rights over our DNA is for us all to share our genes in a huge database. <clears throat> okay, now <clears throat> it goes on to say, I'm just going to read out the bullet points. You can read this yourself. I will include the link in the description afterwards. It said, a group of researchers say that we need to share more of our genetic information. The team said that it's already too late for people to prevent mass exposure. Currently, public databases can find you even if you have never shared your DNA. Well, that's interesting. How would that be, you know, the case? The new system would be more regulated and offer better privacy protection. Now, this, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> is a classical psychopath trick, okay? The first thing that a psychopath will, will pull on you is... Um, well, first of all, you have to understand how psychopaths find your weaknesses. The way they find your weaknesses is by learning throughout their lifetime and by learning from other psychopaths, okay? Psychopaths can recognize each other. It's almost like, you know, if you're if you are walking your pet dog <coughs> down, I don't know, this, the streets of your neighborhood and suddenly your pet dog sees another pet dog, you know, the dog gets ridiculously excited because uh, that is the first time it meets another member of its own species. You know, I mean, Im imagine how crazy it would be if you are being, you know, kept as a pet by, I don't know what, uh, a pack of lions. Um, and then as you are, you know, being dragged through the savannah with this pack of lions, one day you just meet another human being. You would get excited and you would want to talk. So that's what dogs do. Now, when you have psychopaths, they recognize each other because psychopaths are actually nothing like us. And if you know what to look for, um, <clears throat> you will see the signs. And um, I personally think that when people go on about, you know, this uh, this entire topic of all reptilians and another species living among us, um, they don't realize but what they are describing down to every last detail is psychopaths. Now, the psychopathic brain is fundamentally different from the human normal brain. And these people have different behaviors, different traits. And they have certainly they, they don't have certain um, capabilities that we take for granted. And number one is empathy with another human being. And I presume that's because empathy is actually a higher order simulation for me to understand how you feel. I need to have this movie in my head 
where I'm projecting myself into your situation, your body or whatever, and I can imagine how what you're going through actually feels. And then I can have empathy. If I don't have this higher order of functioning, you know, if I really were totally reduced in that, the way I would see the world is that I can, of course, feel my own emotions, but I cannot possibly imagine what anybody else would feel. So anybody else is nothing like me because I can feel my emotions, but I cannot feel theirs, nor do I give a damn about them if I'm a psychopath. So it's like living in a world where you're the only human and everybody around you is an object, like a toaster or a car that is useful to you, but you're not really that emotionally attached because, hey, it's just a toaster and a car. You know, of course, you can get emotionally attached <clears throat> in a utilitarian sort of way to your car. You might love your sports car because it looks, you know, I don't know what, sexy. And you would get really pissed off if that car got smashed up by some idiot. Now, if you're a psychopath, this is, how, this is how you might feel about your wife. If you have a trophy wife with, you know, the usual accessories of big tits and not that big a brain, then you might feel really pleased about your wife as an accessory. But you wouldn't really love her or empathize with her the way, you know, a loving husband would do. And you have to be able to tell the difference, okay? So for me personally, the number one telltale sign in recognizing psychopaths is that the way they would accumulate people around themselves is how, you know, a normal person might accumulate objects. So you might have your trophy objects, you know, but you why would you go for a shitty car if you can afford a, you know, really, um, really fancy car? A psychopath, why would they hang out with a person who they consider boring or dowdy if they can really go after, you know, with their looks and their charm and their deception, you know, after some hot bait that they can use as some flashy trophy wife, you know? So around the psychopath, the, the entire human social uh, mix would be a controlled environment, carefully assembled, like people assemble furniture in their home. You know, things fit together and they're kind of like, whatever flashy, impressive style they want to present. So psychopaths might surround themselves with, I don't know, very fashionable people, very popular people, or, you know, politically powerful people, depending on in what niche their, their little ecosystem resides, you know. They would want to have a competitive advantage. And, um, you know, once you've understood this, and once you've spotted this, and once you've really wrapped your head around their worldview, you know, you will have mastered step number one of stepping out of all the tricks that they will pull on you, okay? Because number the number one trick is to make you feel like they are like you, to trigger your empathy, because your empathy will be your weakness. So they will try to mimic the way you are, okay? For you to build a connection, to build trust and let, um, let down your guard. This is what they will do. And actually, the intel agencies, when they send stalkers my way, or they send, I don't know, one of their infiltrator, saboteur, super idiots my way, which they do like almost daily, what these people will do is they will start off with mirroring. They would mirror my opinions. They would mirror some facts about my life. And the entire idea for them is to go, you know, for me to then respond with, oh my God, you're just like me. I really like you and I trust you. Okay. <clears throat> so, you know, they would come and they would say, oh yeah, you know what? I also went to Oxford or, oh, you know, I, you know what? I'm also going through exactly the same thing as you. And they would literally repeat stuff that they have heard me say on my shows about my situation to try to uh, set up a mirror image to me, and they assume that I will look at my own mirror image and like it. Now, by now, this is for me one of the main ways I discover an intel agent. You know, once I have, you know, recognized the mirroring, I can also recognize which emails they have read and which phone calls they have listened into, you know, and then uh, the only guess I have to have that I have to uh, still do is are they CIA or MI6? You know, that's it. It's clear <clears throat> that they're a bunch of, you know, total whacked out psycho, you know, morons sent my way. And the method is clear. And it's also what's very, very telling is how they pull it off. 
Now, I personally, as an empathic person, I could never have such a fucked up job like that one. Okay, like just play around with deception. But these people, I think, were probably born degenerate and then they got their brain fucked straight clean by the CIA and MI6, right? So for them, it's like it's their day job and they have been told by people who probably took them up the rear side that this is how they have to be. So they just gave in and that's the way they are. So anyway, but that's what they will do. Intel agents will always, always, always come and approach you and mirror you always i have not met one that wouldn't do that i think it's probably less than 1.0 in their little you know how to be a deceptive asshole booklet okay so i have yet to meet one intel agent that comes and is totally different and has such totally different tastes and opinions to me that he would be the polar opposite hasn't happened yet yet in real life most people are nothing like me you know so how come how come how come so this is it. But they will always try to tick, uh, trick you into thinking they are like you. They are nothing like you. So once you have recognized that, never ever project your own needs and ideas and likes and dislikes onto a psychopath because he or she is nothing like you. So, for example, step number one is in our normal society, which, by the way, to psychopaths is considered a total weakling society of utter pussies, okay? In our normal society, it is just normal that if somebody screws up, you don't finish them off, okay? You don't trample on their head and totally destroy them. You just kind of like point out how unfortunate it is and then they're really sorry and then they because they can empathize with you and know how pissed off you are and how bad this is for you they get really sad because they empathize and get you know very remorseful and then you f you recognize because you empathize how bad they are feeling and then you tone it down and eventually the whole thing comes down now this is how normal society works if both parties have empathy if the module of empathy has been either microwaved out of you or you were never born with it you know what a psychopath will do is as soon as they sense weakness so you've made a mistake they will trample on your head and will try to finish you off why wouldn't they if your toaster doesn't work you whack it and if it still doesn't work you throw it in the bin and buy another one and that's exactly what they would want to do with you if you screw up and you don't do what they want You've become inconvenient. Why the hell should they, you know, waste their time with a broken object? Because that's what you would be for them. Okay. So number two, uh, a psychopath typically doesn't de-escalate and doesn't respond to your emotions and how remorseful you feel. So if you are working for a psychopath, if you screw up, you will be just put through intense absolutely unjustified psychological mauling right he or she will continue trample on your head and that's just because they can and it's not even because they particularly hate you it's just because that's the way they are they will literally want to destroy anything in their path because it's just like a broken toaster in their path you know if you could you would also throw out all your broken electronics as well right so <clears throat> that's what they are doing with human beings so get this around your head that if you ever detect this you keep on you know jumping you see somebody who's still trampling on somebody who's down think warning warning this is a psychopath warning okay if there's no de-escalation if you can really see somebody pounce on others at the, the slightest uh, show of weakness that's a psychopathic trait and these people are dangerous because they are continuously like people who are like tigers, you know, waiting to pounce. Um, so be very aware. Now, the reason why this is relevant is because also a psychopath has absolutely no emotional mapping of you. Okay. So because they don't emotionally map you because they are pretty incapable. I mean, they kind of, they learn to read your mimicry and they learn to kind of data analyze you on a superficial level, but they don't really understand the implications, what these emotions mean to you, okay? <clears throat> they have a very utilitarian view. Now, because they're incapable of this, okay, 
you have to understand that the damage that they're doing to you okay will never factor into their calculation in fact the more damage they can do to you the better because maybe they might feel just a bit annoyed that you're broken toaster okay so you know showing emotion to a psychopath is of absolutely no value or it might even be counterproductive okay so um and now i say that um you know Keep in mind that when you're going um, out about in the world, you will be faced by mostly normal people and then psychopaths. If you're going into certain situations like the military or MI6 or the CIA, you will be faced mostly by psychopaths, actually. You know, so normal world and intel world and the military are completely different and organized crime. It's also mostly psychopaths. So. If you are communicating to the normal world, showing emotion is really useful because other people empathize. It's genetically encoded in them. And if you show emotion, especially when you show distress, you activate them. Okay. They will think, oh my God, how can we help? Or they think, oh my God, that's horrible. You know, that mustn't be allowed to happen. So, this is why if you go online and you make a YouTube video, I'm not seeing the chat right now, so I suppose it's right it's exactly the same. You, you probably can read the chat right now and check that it's true what I'm saying. Most of the messages will be very supportive unless it's these people sent by Intel who will have absolutely no sympathy. And if I show emotion and if I cry on, on a, a YouTube video, they will be jeering and they will pounce on it and they will email later or make it a conversational topic to try to, you know, um, uh, incite others. <coughs> like, oh, look, there's weakness, there's weakness, we can pounce, we can pounce. That is a telltale sign of a psychopath as well, okay? Now, the trick is that they will pull is that they will try to quickly recruit people who are I don't know, vengeful towards you or have some grievances against you or have something and they will want to recruit those to make you, make them pounce on you when you're weak. That is a classic psychopath tr strategy. To give you an example, which just, you know, hit me in the face uh, not that long ago, right? So you maybe remember the last broadcast with do's and don'ts where I spent the entire you know, second half, two hours outlining everything that actually happened behind the scenes between my you know, former team and, my, and me. Now, one of the most absolutely baffling incidents that I only really figured out <coughs> as I was preparing for today's show was that um, Millicent said to me, um, you know, when she criticized the banner on my, on my, I think it's even in the email that I posted, um, when she criticized the banner, she said, yeah, and I also stood up for you when, uh, when people, um, I think, complained about you crying on a YouTube video. And it's true, there was one YouTube video where I literally broke down in tears, and I broke down in tears, actually, you know, not just out of self-pity, but because I was in so much pain, um, being shot at, I thought the only productive work I can do is actually watch uh, films, you know, uh, on, on film streaming services and try to analyze cartel signaling. And I actually watched the series of unfortunate events, okay? This, this, it's a children's uh, series, and it was about the one episode where they're in the school, and it, I could read the entire cartel signaling, and it was all about child abuse and pedophilia in schools. And when you really have this capability of reading the cartel, using cartel signaling, the message in these stories completely changes. There's a second, there's what normals see, and there's what psychopaths and criminals and cartel members see, and the two stories are polar opposites. So while for most people, this was just a kid's program <clears throat> about you know a bunch of kids, when I analyzed it, this was hardcore pedophile um, you know, communication about child abuse and the recruitment of hardcore pedophiles for um, child murder and ritual sacrifice, okay? Now, there's only so much of that stuff I can take before I, that really makes me snap. So I broke down crying, combined with the torture, me empathizing with me mapping out, you know, what that meant and the, the size of this child abuse market and how these psychopaths are jeering on, you know, Netflix series about this sort of shit that made me crack up. So I cried. But um, 
when I put something out on YouTube, I know that the people who I want to reach are the normals. You know, the psychos can go and kiss my ass. I'll see them in court. So I don't mind if I cry on YouTube. You know, if you don't like it, piss off. Watch some happy kitten videos. If, you know, it upsets you, well, maybe you get your, you know, your ass off the chair and help other victims, you know, like me. Um, so there's absolutely no question about crying on YouTube being a bad thing, right? But yet what happened behind the scenes, and this is something that Millicent revealed to me, the psychos watched this, the little Intel degenerates, and, you know, they were like, yay! Now we have something to do, something to do. Our handlers will be so pleased with us, you know. So they swarmed and they contacted all the former members <clears throat> who they hoped would have a grievance against me. And they started blasting them with, look, look, Catherine cried on, on YouTube video. You know, it's like, oh, this is discrediting us all. I don't know what bullshit they said. It didn't make a fucking bit of sense. But anyway, I discovered this pattern. And I was like, wow no normal person would ever do such a thing N no one it's like the it's like a, a, a total fail safe psychopath test if you do this you're a psychopath you know if it would have never occurred to you you're normal okay that's it and i triggered the psychopath effect i was i was so pleased i mean i wish i could find out who actually said that to Millicent, right because these people would have to be put into into psychiatry for the rest of their lives because they're dangerous they are actually dangerous malicious manipulative psychopaths who are most likely trained by intel and if i would wager a guess these people would probably be trained at some point to be killers so we need to find the fuckers but um this is how you can tell right this is how you can tell and that's the trick that unfortunately they pulled successfully on Millicent because she believed them now, you never, ever believe a psychopath, ever. They will never inform you in a way that helps you. Why would they? Why would you inform your toaster about something that benefits your toaster? I mean, why would you give a shit, okay? This is how you have to think. To a psycho, you're nothing but a toaster. If you're lucky, you're a flashy toaster. If you're unlucky, you're a malfunctioning, inefficient, broken toaster. So get this right in your head now. What you have to know about the trick psychopaths pull is that if you're up against them, they will trigger you into showing an emotion. And this emotion will be taken as a weakness by all the other psychopaths in around them. And that will be the sign for all of them to go for you simultaneously. You know, this kind of like hunting impact sort of a um, thing. Now, when I saw this, particular constellation and people actively having learned to um <clears throat> war themselves against it well that's that was when i watched the supreme court okay now um the barristers who were presenting cases <clears throat> they are faced with the supreme court judges now i'm not going to comment on the uk supreme court judges in particular now but it's enough to say that the barristers who are facing each other right typically in any other court would be faced with the other barrister being a psychopath very 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 high likelihood right and then a good deal of the judges having been planted by the cartel to be cartel judges who are also a bunch of criminals okay so it's a total psycho environment um and then also you know some of your clients might be psychos because you know <clears throat> it could be ceos who are fighting other ceos for a lot of money so you could have literally a room filled with psychopaths now if you're a barrister who happens to be normal and you show just a grain of insecurity when you present your case these people will fucking turn on you okay the judge will turn on you because he's a criminal and maybe the other party paid him more the other barrister will totally rip you to shreds. And then your client, if you're unlucky, you know, who's a CEO and also a psychopath, he will finish you off. So when I watched these barristers, it was amazing because when they were faced with criticism by a judge or by something that sounded like criticism, they had like, you know, a poker face just went up and it just went like, woof. And they just went dead before I could read micro expressions. And then it was like the trail was lost. I was just staring at a screen. I was like, wow, this keeps happening. 
And this is not something that I'm used to seeing. You know, I'm used to seeing a nonstop data stream of micro expressions. And suddenly I'm like following the story and it just goes, Voomph, you know, and uh, when you're sensitive to this, uh, it's amazing. And then I realized this is a psychopath God. Okay. Now the, the psychos, they will just have this psychopath. I'm totally fucking brain dead face most of the time. And you wouldn't see any up or down or emotional thing because they're just going to court. They're a bunch of psychopaths. You know, they don't really care. They don't have any emotions. They couldn't give, give a shit about the emotions of their client or that of the judge and the other party. They're just like, I want to get in there, do my thing and get a lot of cash and be out that's it they just don't care you know so you wouldn't see any of this <clears throat> now when you have somebody who shows normal facial expressions and micro expressions and suddenly just blocks them this is somebody who has learned to have a psychopath emulator in a very highly psychopathic environment so you will see this i would pres i've seen it a lot with high flying barristers okay um, and I've seen it particularly with female barristers. And I think that's because women have a statistically uh, much uh, lower likelihood of being psychopaths. And they would be working in, a, in an environment with a very high male psychopaths. So, you know, extra sexism and the, the general arsiness of men would, you know, add to that. So women would have a much stronger, much more better developed psychopath emulator, you know, psychopath guard. Um, so I have seen it in barristers, but you expect that in the intel um, area. And you would also expect it in the military, of course. Okay. And be aware that this is what it is. And also be aware that if you're dealing with psychopaths, you need that for your survival. Okay. So if you're a victim and you're faced by these bloody gang stalkers, if you show them an emotion or you want to get across to them how really bad it makes you feel, they all just laugh even harder because they really fucking get off on it. Okay. Just, you know, save your emotions <clears throat> for your YouTube videos where you want to reach out to lots and lots of normal people. They will activate through that. And in your YouTube videos, ignore the psychopathic comments and know that every single nasty comment will be by an intel agent. So, what you will do, or one of these J Trig, GCHQ, NSA trolls, you know these hired psychopaths. <clears throat> so in reverse, what you can do is you can go through all your YouTube videos and these days the live chat remains and go through and screenshot every nasty psychopathic comment because the username will get us the IP address, which will get us the identity of the person. And I bet you that the vast majority of these people are Intel hired. I guarantee you, because normal people will not have that. So hands-on advice today, look for the psychopath markers, you know, look for nasty comments that a normal person wouldn't do. And then immediately have your personal emotional psychopath guard when you're reading that and know that you, you are not allowed to take that on board. You're not allowed to generate any feelings in response because that is not a normal person talking to you. This is a very highly mentally degenerate, very, very mentally ill person. It's not even an illness. It's incurable. It's a degeneracy. Okay. So you do not think that these are normal people talking to you because if you make that base assumption, which many victims do, it would crush you because it, you would think that a normal person who empathized with that situation still told you that you were rubbish. Right now, you would have to be really, really rubbish in normal society that the, an empathizing person would ever tell you. You know, there would have to be some truth to that. So that's what your entire instinctive reaction would be to assume that and then start caving in and start getting depressed and start shifting off into learned helplessness and be paralyzed. And then you die because they finish you off. You mustn't do that. You have to, you know, see that and then lunch okay if you meet a psychopath you go for his fucking jugular always always you know and just train that as a reaction if you see these people you have to start thinking about how the fuck am i gonna kill them and when you start thinking like that don't worry they will see it in your eyes and that is the moment when they start taking you seriously okay <clears throat> i'm sorry that's just how it is you know
typically in normal society, if somebody just bumps their shopping trolley into you and you spin around and you, you look at them with a gaze like, I'm going to kill you, that would be bad. But when you are dealing with these people who are actually out to kill you, who are killing you, actually shooting you in the head and, and into your body parts and into your vital organs, for your own survival, you have to start thinking like a psychopath. You have to start developing a psychopath guard. And when you're faced with them in an actual situation, you do not show an emotion. And ideally, you are just completely filled with the desire to finish them off. Okay? You just, you just have to get this into your head. Okay? Do not make the mistake that you are dealing somehow with normal people and any sort of showing emotion will get you brownie points or will help you out of the situation, okay? And I wish I had it um, now here close to hand, but there's a, a very telling um, scene in one of the, I think it was one of the James Bond movies, and I have to find it. I think I remember which um, thing it was, but I think it was, um, it was James Bond popping down into, you know, into the, the the store to get his newest gadgets and talking to Q. And in one of these, there were many permutations of James Bonds and Qs, and in one of these combinations, in the conversation, if I remember correctly, uh, Q says something that implies that he was kind of like, you know, helping James Bond along in his early days when he was still a young intel agent. And then there's the sentence um, that where Q says something like, um, the most important lesson I showed, um, I taught you was um, never let them see you bleed. Okay, that was the sentence. The most important lesson I taught you is never let them see you bleed, something like that. Okay, now what does that mean? In normal society, this is totally like what? I mean, if you're bleeding, you need help, ASAP. In the psychopath world, if you show a weakness, everybody will turn on you. So James Bond having to operate in the intel world and the organized crime world would have to operate in a very highly psychopathic environment. And if you show weakness, everybody will just, you know, jump on you like a pack of hounds out of their natural predator instinct. So in that environment, you really have to be like, like granite, you know, cold, rock solid and ideally granite with a gaze of i'm gonna crush you you know and then it would be like okay that's when the psychopaths kind of stay calm you know instead of just pouncing on you because you know the boundaries are clear and they do understand that you know other psychopaths think just like that most of the time they're running around thinking how can i get rid of this guy or her you know how can i advance myself and it would not even be an insult to a psychopath. It would be like, yeah, that's their standard default mode. Now, the reason why this is all relevant to the upcoming court cases, and this is what I'm trying to get into people's heads, right? And I want to get it into the head of every last housewife. If you think that these people who are running these space-based weapons are ever going to stop just because they feel pity for us or realize what a bunch of criminals they were, you're wrong. The only thing they ever respond to is their own death. Okay. Now they don't even fear the police because they control them. They don't really fear danger because psychopaths, that's another trait of theirs. They just don't have this higher function of, you know, having a mental movie and really factoring in all the risk factors. They've got some rudimentary movies so they can tell what might happen next, but you know, they don't have the same emotional mapping. And this is why psychopaths are also very uh, kind of fast and versatile in danger situations because literally they're too fucking dumb to realize how dangerous the situation actually is. You know, if this is, you know, uh, the, the sort of mindset of a bus driver who has to take care of a lot of people behind him, having a very low risk sensitivity is a bad thing because this bus driver would get himself killed and all passengers. But if you are just talking about an intel agent, and given that the Crown Corporation couldn't give a shit if any of them dies, you want to have a highly psychopathic guy, typically, but women can also be psychopathic, 
who just doesn't understand risk because then he will just go at it for work and do everything and you know most of the time it would be fine and the one time it isn't well you know who gives a shit everybody else is a psychopath too so no one's gonna cry about him you know so this is the world we are now looking into when as we are opening up this can of worms of the intel agencies okay so <laughs> understand that if you're especially approaching an intel agency and you want to make these people stop just going there with you know just oh yeah but it would be fine if they just they would just stop please stop like bullshit. you go in and you say if you guys you know don't stop by yesterday you'll be fucking dead and oh look you haven't stopped by yesterday so we're gonna fucking kill you okay that that is always the opening that's the entire purpose of doing all this when we make it very very clear and there's no misunderstanding about this you know i want every last fucking one of them dead you know in a lawful manner of course right but it's <clears throat> personally really only uh you know necessary because we want to avoid them turning it around and start killing innocent people so for this reason we need to have public trials and court martials and all the evidence has to be there the evidence has to be solid right because we want to make sure we kill the psychopaths and the psychopaths don't trick us into us killing innocent people you know <coughs> but please get it into your head that if you're going into the world of organized crime if you don't want you know their head chopped off these guys will not take you seriously you'll be coming across like a bunch of limp wristed nancy boys right why the fuck should they care you know um so you have to make it clear that this is what you want okay and every single time they do something you have to start taking steps towards having these people executed after military tribunals and you know please don't fall into this thing of oh yeah but just find jesus and love everybody well you know if finding jesus would have ever helped anybody religious wars wouldn't have been so bloody okay so forget about jesus when it comes to psychopaths because these people will never ever find their way to freaking jesus or anybody else right so let's stop wasting time with this and you have to understand that you're dealing with a mental deficiency okay that turns these people into predators who kill gladly actually you know um and they enjoy it and they find it really funny and they find it highly amusing and it's kind of like a turn on when you're suffering all right so please now once you have understood all this okay um now let's go back to the, the trick that they pulled when i brought up this article okay let's have a look at it again now this is another um you know um there are several tricks being pulled when you read stuff like that number one it says experts claim blah 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 and the group of researchers now what this trick is this is a standard textbook trick of psychopaths i call it badging getting badged now getting badged is using a psych it's like um well what's it called a cognitive bias and cognitive bias in psychology is if you're making some sort of assumptions that work most of the time so they're kind of like uh you know uh, natural to us and uh, we keep these at base assumptions but they can be wrong in many cases and can be very misleading now the badging phenomenon is one of these if somebody badges you like somebody like a police officer shows his badge right you immediately think okay he's a police officer he's entitled to do that and if i just uh if i'm not a criminal i'll be fine and i'm trying to teach you that in in today's environment you cannot make this assumption if somebody shows you a badge the only thing that you can assume is that they've just raised their hand to show you uh you know a piece of plastic that was probably made in china for 50 cents and that's that that's the only assumption you make who they are what the fuck they want and what the consequences of you trusting them will be is not something you can decide by just looking at the fact that they raised their hand with a plastic chinese little thing okay now if they show you a police badge these days actually they are much more likely to be members of a global organized crime cartel 
then they are likely to be police officers there to protect you and to help you. Okay? But to be able to reach that realization, you have to realize, hang on, did I just get badged? You know, getting badged triggers assumptions and associations in your head and you immediately think, oh yeah, this guy must come from a building that has a forensics department and is funded by my government to protect me. It's like, this is so many base assumptions, it blows my mind. Just You just read that just by looking at the fucking Chinese plastic badge, you know? Do not make these base assumptions. What it actually means when he shows you something like that, I can actually show you by by showing you a badge of the, I think it was the LA LAPD. Let me just show you LAPD police badge. And then I'll show you what exactly you're being flashed with. Okay. Now, here it is. Okay. Now let me share my screen. So if if you are ever stopped by or you know um, uh, get somebody knock at your door from the LAPD uh, police department, what they will do is they will flash this badge at you. Okay, here yeah. and it will say police officer of the Los Angeles police, and then it will have a uh, a number. Okay. Now if you look carefully, so they would just uh, flash this at you and they would say, please, could I just come into your home? Or can you show me your um, <clears throat> driver's license or something like that? And you would say, oh yeah, officer, yeah, sure, come in. And you would perfectly trust them, thinking they're there to protect you. But look carefully what they just showed you. What they showed you is an image of the LAPD police department. And then it has rays in the background. And it has some weird X's around, I don't know what, here at the top. And then it has something like a circle in the crest inside, you know, and some other weird markings. Okay, I mean, pretty funky badge to have, right? So, <clears throat> I mean, look at it carefully, right? It looks like some cheap thing made in China. And now look at the symbolism. What you got flashed with here, is this building now? Let's have a look at the building. The L A L A P D Police Department. I hope I get yes. This one here. Now, this, if you look carefully, this, ladies and gentlemen, maybe I can make it even bigger, is a fucking obelisk. Okay, let me blow it up for you. So this is an obelisk, and you can even see at the very top the pyramid, these steps to the pyramid, and then the top bit of the pyramid is missing, implying that they are kind of like everything here, but they are not the top of the pyramid. I mean, they're only the police, they're only the enforcers. So this thing is actually an obelisk. It's a cartel symbol, and it outlines everything that these people are actually are. They are cartel members. And it shows you they are cartel members, but they're not the very highest. Okay, the, the highest people are not here. And then when you zoom out a bit and you, you know what an obelisk actually is, it's a phallic symbol, you also realize that there are two testicles left and right. I mean, take a step back and look at it, and what you see is a dick with two testicles. Okay, you might find this funny, but that is exactly how the cartel understands it. It's a cartel inside a joke. So the fact that they made the, the Los Angeles Police Department look like a massive dick and put it into the, uh, you know, the landscape is a Masonic joke in itself. Now, when they put their building onto their badges here, what they're flashing in your face is a dick, right? Now, if you look carefully here at this symbol and then look at the ridge, I mean, Look, look at this, look at the structure at the top, right? Look at what the building looks like here, right? Careful now, really focus on the tip. And now look at that tip, right? This is, this is not funny. This, do you not find it like hilarious when you know what this is? And then also look at the beams at the back. What these are, these are rays of the sun, rays of the sun here. Now, the sun seems to be behind, rising behind this building. And the sun, ladies and gentlemen, if you're new to this, the sun 
is in the Jesuit logo because at the core, the cartel is about sun worship, okay? This sun, the rays of the sun. Now, because the Jesuits are right at the heart, the sun radiates out from them. When you have cartel institutions, the sun radiates out from behind them. It means the, the Jesuits are behind them, okay? Now, what this badge actually means that's being flashed in your face is we're the uh, here, first of all, you know, that's a dick in your face. Second of all, we're a bunch of cartel people with the obelisk and the Jesuit, as in Vatican Intel, stands behind us. <clears throat> that's what they just flashed in your face. Okay, now you can get a bit more, if you don't believe me, you can do a bit more forensics on this. Here, for example, on this site, they actually explain what the different parts of the um, badge mean. You know, I mean, remember, this is for the, for the normals, okay? The official site of the Los Angeles Police Department says, okay, you have um, the border design based on, you know what? I wanted to read faces, but feces, but anyway, it means something else. Or ancient Roman symbol of authority. Yeah, no shit. So it goes back to the Romans, does it? Italy, okay. Now, number two <clears throat> is the designation of rank, okay? In a male Masonic organization, your rank and, you know, that's everything. Then now here, number three, the rays of a setting sun represent a West, Lo uh, West Coast location. Yeah, bullshit, motherfuckers. I might believe this if this is the only cartel symbol I would have ever seen in my life. But as the show progresses, I will show you the rising sun in many, many other places as well, where it just clearly means we have the Jesuits behind us. Okay, so forget this. This is now a sentence for the muggles. Now, number five... Oh, sorry, number four is the replica of the city hall, right? Okay, actually, it's the city hall, you know. Now, number five, very interesting, this round thing in the middle is the city seal, <clears throat> and it depicts the history through Spanish, Mexican, autonomous, and United States control. It's site um, as a prolific garden spot. Yeah, garden spot, yeah, garden, where you're just, f you know, farming stuff and the early influence of the Mission Padres. Do you know who the Mission Padres were, right? The Mission, a Padre, is for Catholic Church, right? Now, the Mission Padres are the fucking Jesuits people, okay? So they say it here, the seal depicts the early influence of the Jesuits. Yeah, no shit, I would have never guessed that. So, what I want to say is this badging effect right? When you get badged, you had all these assumptions. You thought, okay, if I see this police badge from the LAPD, it means he's there to protect me and, uh, you know, and so on and so on. As I know, I mean, the psychopaths already had a joke at your expense, right? They know you're making these assumptions and it's so easy to trick you. It just costs about 20 cents from a Chinese manufacturer. And then you get these and then you can give it to all your criminals and they just have to do this, you know, and, and then you'll be just like, okay, come into my home, do whatever you like with me. I like you and I trust you. Now, <laughs> this is a perfect trick pulled by psychopaths. And when you actually look, you just got this in your face, literally this symbol in your face, right? Right there, the obelisk and, you know, it's like, come on, what? Your reaction should be, excuse me, what the fuck is this? You're, you're flashing a dick in my face with the Jesuit logo? I mean, piss off, you know, out of my house. And yet no one has ever done that in the history of the LAPD. Not one person. And you are millions of Americans. So, you know, this is the power of the tricks that psychopaths pull on you. You never really look. You start mind, your mind movie, you start mapping you start trusting and you start assuming that the other person is a normal. Now, this person is not going to be normal. They have a very high likelihood to be a member of an organized crime cartel known the Crown Corporation. In fact, what this badge shows is that they were paid by that global crime cartel. And, you know, as a result, they're very high likely uh, to have to be a sociopath or a psychopath. 
And that's the trick they pulled on you. Now, you know, of course you can say, yeah, but if a police officer comes, you know, you have to comply. Yeah, I know because you are under the rule of a global crime cartel, but beware that you were just badged. So now keep this keep this criminal at bay as much as you can. And when he when you have any interaction with him, record it. Just say, okay, excuse me, officer, let me just turn the, the you know, this tap on and then pop in get your audio recorder and record or your mobile phone and record the entire conversation because you're most likely dealing with a criminal okay do not get badged now when you're reading this article now returning to the um uh the newspaper article that we started with with this background you immediately know you immediately recognize this effect of badging okay let me show you again experts claim and then some ludicrous sentence, the only way to improve your privacy rights is to sign away your DNA, you know, into a huge database. You yeah, have right. In the environment where, you know, we are dealing with a bunch of Nazis who are obsessed with eugenics, the last thing you should do is hand over your DNA. Now, the way they pull this off, that it even appears in the Daily Mail, is that they start with experts claim. So here's the badge. They are experts. You can't say anything if you're just, you know, what, a housewife? How dare you question the experts? So they want to badge you here, okay? Do not fall for these psychopathic tricks. Um, and then again, they do it again. They don't just say, you know, Joe Bloggs said so. They say a group of researchers. You immediately think Ivy League and some, you know, amazing, brilliant people who are just there to make the world a better place. No, it's just a bunch of people. And by now, with everything I know, these people are likely to be criminals. Now, if we make this assumption that this is so ludicrous that, um, you know, it's uh, it's just it's just bound to be something criminal. Do we see any evidence? And if you start reading this um, here. You just have to go down to the next section and it says the researchers from Vanderbilt University Medical Center for Genetic Privacy. Blah, 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 blah. Now, Vanderbilt, this is the Vanderbilt uh, University Medical Center in Tennessee. And if you have listened carefully to my former um, colleague, Dr. Millicent Black, you will know that Vanderbilt uh, Medical Center in Tennessee is hugely involved in targeting. And the hospital seems to be actively, you know, trying to get at the chip data and really perhaps even chipping people. I would assume that they are. You know, and the Vanderbilt family, really big cartel family, you know, looks like they are Nazis because they seem to be involved in a lot of Nazi projects. So in other words, if you don't fall for the badging trick of the psychopaths and you just really look, what you see is Vanderbilt, and you might have an, an alternative um, mind movie of, hang on, signing away your DNA, eugenics, Nazis, and then you read, and it's like Vanderbilt, Nazis, Dr. Melissa Black's case, chipping, torture, murder. Boom. Totally different story, right? Um, but you have to get over this badging effect, you know? And also, when you get people with PhDs, and heck, I know because I worked in the field where it was only PhDs around me, do not get badged. Do not get badged by the PhD. Yes, of course, in principle, what it means is that if you really have somebody with a genuine PhD, they work their ass off for typically something like four years, maybe even longer, totally on their own. And then this entire work would be new science that has never been there before it hasn't been done before and they had to do it on their own so that's what it typically means if somebody has a phd but of course even somebody who did that could be highly psychopathic and could be member a member of a criminal network so be careful do not be badged and do not just assume that you know a phd means first of all that it's somebody who's actually clever you know Maybe they just bought their PhD for free. They didn't do the work themselves. Uh, themselves. Maybe they had some colleagues help them. You know, maybe somebody wrote the PhD thesis for them. Or maybe they are just a member of the criminal crime cartel and the crime cartel put up a fake persona with a PhD. All of these are possible. And these days, they are not just possible. They are, in some cases, highly likely. 
Um, now, the same applies when you go to a hospital, as I had to, you know, discover myself at Hospital Erasmus. My personal view is that a lot of the people I was surrounded by, they badged me. They, you know, came, they had the outfits of doctors, they were in a hospital presenting themselves as doctors. And I actually think a lot of them were intel agents. They were intel agents in training. And don't forget that intel agents also need to learn how to do operations and, you know, find out how to implant people. They maybe find out how to kill people subtly during operations. So, of course, you would have intel agents in training. And of course, you would have a particularly high density of them in a Masonic hospital that is, uh, you know, under the auspices of the Belgian Queen, who, by all accounts that I've heard, is married to a pedophile, you know, a high profile pedophile, who most likely is involved in the Dutroux affair. So, hmm, if you go to these hospitals, do you, <clears throat> do you expect to find genuine doctors who are, you know, out there to, to care for the well being of their patients? Are you much more likely to be uh, faced by human traffickers, child abusers, killers, serial killers, perhaps, you know, and outright criminals and fakes? So at the time when, you know, I was there with Melanie, I didn't know that Hospital Erasmus was a Masonic hospital. I know now. I didn't know through this entire debacle that it was, uh, you know, the, the whatever, the uh, figurehead you know, of this hospital was the Queen of Belgium. If I had known, I wouldn't have gone into the place, you know. And then, of course, I got badged. You know, I trusted doctors to behave like doctors, but they behaved like uh, psychopaths, serial killers, and intel agents. And I think that's what they were. If you have normal doctors, it's pretty impossible for them to behave like a trained intel agent by accident. So if somebody behaves like that, that's because that's what they are, you know? So um, again, you have to, um, you know, I, I'm talking about bitter experience, right? I mean, this, these sort of mistakes, be tricked by psychopaths can be devastating, you know? And that's why I'm saying we all have to learn to not get badged. Now, this is the article about the, um, there's lots more that you can read from this um DNA um, database article, but I want to present a couple more, okay? Now, this is another one that I tweeted out today because somebody sent it to me. And by the way, thank you. Thank you to all who send me interesting articles and links. I really appreciate it and I would like to acknowledge it. And, um, you know, I hope I retweeted it. Sometimes I take whatever you send me and I tweet the article again because it appears bigger in the tweet, you know? But I have to get into the habit of just, you know, giving you the attribution that you found the article. So this article was not found by me. I have to look up who the user was who sent it to me. Let me share my screen because it's very important. And this is an article that you can put into your court case. Oh, damn. So Google has just crashed on me. I, um, I am not sure if you can actually see what I'm seeing. Uh, my entire Google has frozen. And I think it might be like yesterday. You have to give me two minutes to just log out and log back in. And um, in the in the meantime, just uh, stay with me. Maybe read the article on the... Ah, um, oh, God. You can probably still hear me, but I just, I can't see you. Everything has frozen over. So just read the article. If you can still hear me, please read the article about the um, DNA database and get right now, while you're waiting for me, get all the information that you need, you know, and everything else that you discover right now. Okay, so see you in a moment. I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Um, let me just check that you guys can uh, still see me. I hope um, I just have to wait for this to come back online. I just have to check my audio. For this to come back. Okay, yes, you guys can hear me. Okay, thank you. So this is a novel type of sabotage that I haven't experienced before. And what it, the way it looks on my end is that absolutely everything just freezes over and I can't um, share my screen, nothing. So let me just get back to what I wanted to show you. Um, let me um, show you the article. So I'll try to share my screen again, and I hope that uh, hell doesn't freeze over yet once more. So this is the important article that you need to see. It's called um, MIT News, okay? Now in the olden days, when I saw MIT and Oxford, I immediately assumed, oh, that means these are really clever people and they are just out there to make the world a better place, okay? These days I know, oh, this is a cartel place. They are putting out cartel research for the military industrial genocide um, complex. And uh, yeah, they are also um, trying to put a positive gloss over so that their donors um, and their alumni keep donating and keep them afloat. Okay, but here, look at what MIT News tells us. They are saying artificial intelligence senses people through walls. Yeah, well, no shit, right? This is what the victims have been telling um, us for a long time. And they are saying wireless smart home system um, from computer science and artif artificial intelligence laboratory could monitor diseases and help the elderly age in place. Okay, now please, I'll ask you to read the entire article in detail and then you know watch the video and really make up your own mind but i want to give you the heads up about badging now here the mit logo will be the first um, instance of badging you will assume that these people are really clever and they're just out there to make uh you know the place uh, uh, the world a better place now when you read this and it will sound so touchy-feely you know this is psychopaths imitating the way you are, this is mirroring. And they will assume, or they will give you an image that, where you will recognize yourself because you know they know that you like a smart home, which is really easy, and that you're really scared of diseases. And you are also very, you know, you are so touchy-feely, you really like to keep your elderly people around and you want to, you know, um, have them stay in place and uh you know have a nice retirement blah 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 okay now by the way when i talk like that please recognize that i am one of the normals and that is precisely how i feel yeah i do want my grandparents to have a really nice home and not to be carted off into some nazi um, extermination camp otherwise known as a care home you know um, of course, that's exactly how I feel, but also realize that for psychopaths, they think differently. So when I now adopt the view of a psychopath, don't misunderstand that these are my views, they are not. I'm just trying to warn you. Now, a psychopath would think elderly people, I mean, you know, you can't use them as trophy wives. Uh, you can't really just... Uh, you know, drag them around and make them do what you want because they feel far too experienced and wise to actually be pulled into bullshit. So for psychopath, elderly people are a waste of space. Okay. So um, just get rid of them because they would think those are, you know, the older version toasters. Why would you want to keep them? Why would you want to have an old toaster? Just get rid of it. That's how a psychopath thinks. A normal person would think, well, of course, we're not going to get rid of the elderly. In fact, we should talk to them more because they have seen all this shit before. We can really figure out what's going on in the world, right? And in any way, you know, they have given their lives to raising us and, you know, making our world wonderful. And we love them, right? We are really emotionally bonded to our grandparents and we totally adore them. So, you know, this is not our world. But look how carefully they were triggering every single one. They were mirroring. They set up a perfect mirror. And this, to me, shows training. So whoever has written the article, 
either is imitating uh, the typical MIT articles and has to write in that vein. Uh, th that vein. I don't want to want to accuse the you know journalist without knowing him or her <clears throat> that they are psychopaths, but they have to be aware that what they just did is they used a psychopath script. So they presented something that I'm about to tell you is really nefarious and horrific. And they just presented it mirroring the normals so that you as the normal person recognize your three traits. You know, look, this is about smart homes and you want a really, you know, modern and um, very comfy home that does most of the things you find boring for you, don't you? That is tick box number one. Yes, we normals do want that, you know? Number two, you're really scared about diseases, aren't you? And if you have a disease, you don't really want to go into hospitals because they scare you, right? Because you have these emotional responses to hospitals and they remind you of people suffering because you're an empath. So if you have a disease, you want it monitored at home, right? Now, this is tick box number two, right? And then the, th the third thing is always something touchy-feely about, oh, you know, we really care about elderly people. Look, we psychopaths, we're just like you, you know? And when you have the psychopaths go like, uh, you know, it literally tick it off like a computer program, like tick, tick, tick. It's like what they're doing is they are ticking boxes, okay? They are tasked with selling something that's about killing people and really using them and human trafficking them, and they have to sell it to the normals. So what they do is like, oh, the normals, what are they like again? What do we know about the normals? Oh yeah, yeah, of course, they're a lazy bunch, so they like convenience. They are really scared and a bunch of scaredy cats, and they have all these emotional responses to hospitals. Fucking weird, because actually hospitals are fun. You can watch all these people suffer, you know? And then, of course, oh, yeah, we remember they have this touchy-feely stuff about fluffy bunnies and typically, you know, elderly people and the disabled. Boring. Okay, but let's just write an article where we just stick these things in and in a kind of way we don't really understand. So we're combining stuff that doesn't really fit together, like smart homes and diseases and elderly people, you know? Let's just stick them in there, in the article, in the title, and then we know we badge them, and then they will just, you know, swallow whatever else we tell them. That's just what happened, people, in this article, right? So if you know how psychopaths work, you just read this and you're like, what? You're, you're in like one sentence, you're throwing smart homes at me and diseases and elderly people. I mean, how did you how did you come up with this association? And you're combining all that when it's about technology that can monitor people through walls. Now, which game of association did produce that concatenation of things, right? It doesn't make any fucking bit of sense, does it? But when you know that psychopaths always mirror and they will first, you know, it's kind of like they have to build up a fake wall, you know, like a fake mirror, they will just present an image of you and hide behind that, you know? So it's like, oh, okay, just think about the smart home, the elderly people and, and the disease you're really scared of and you don't like hospitals, right? Okay, so just focus on that. And then the psychopaths will be behind this facade. So what's now the facade? Let's go back and, and really try to analyze. Um, now, what you have, what you're being sold here is all electronic equipment, right? Like wireless signals and then an RF pose, whatever the hell that would be. Um, it could serve as a healthcare system to monitor patients' movements from the other side of a wall. Now that, if you understand cartel signaling, that tells me exactly what this is on, what they are on about. So let's start thinking about this. This through the wall monitoring is using wireless signals. So in other words, what these people are talking about is they're talking about using your mobile phone and your Wi-Fi and your neighbor's Wi-Fi to monitor you in your own home, okay? That's what they're talking about. And then they're talking about smart home systems. So your smart meter, which by the way is pinging, every uh, you know once in a while and a ludicrously intense pulse like your mobile phone now that too will be used as a radar system through your home so that um a snapshot can be taken off the entire insides of your home using your smart meter alone you know okay so there will be these wireless smart home systems so wireless means a lot of wi-fi radiation 
And then they throw in, you know, computer science and artificial intelligence laboratories. Okay, fine. So the whole thing will be hooked up to AI. And then they want to monitor diseases in patients, you know, monitor diseases and patients' movements from the other side of a wall. Why would you want to have it on the other side of a wall if it's just a hospital? You know, couldn't you just be in the patient room, like some monitor si monitoring system next to the patient? Why does it have to be through a wall? Well, the, the thing is, guys, that in cartel talk, patient is a code word. Patient doesn't mean patient, as in somebody who's being treated by a doctor. A patient is a human experimentation subject. Do you understand? And there was one victim who revealed that when you're going through um, airport scanners, of course, airport uh, scanners can measure your chips. And if you've got a ludicrously amount of, you know, ludicrously large amount of them <coughs> inside the computer database of Lockheed Martin, you will be flagged as a patient who has a lot of medical devices in them because you need them. <coughs> so in other words, excuse me, your, um, your brain chips and all these spinal implants and ludicrous amounts of metal implants and RFID uh, chips and this and that, when you go through an airport scanner, will make it light up like a Christmas tree. But because these airport scanners are, you know, built by companies um, owned by the cartel and by weapons manufacturers, they will, in the software, have an algori algorithm that recognizes your ID, maybe your even your chip ID, and will match it against the database. And there you will be declared as a patient, as a known patient with medical devices. Okay. That's how it works. That's how the soul system works. Now, when you're reading this, and when, when you know this, I have the benefit of having been told by a patient, not by a patient, by a victim, that patient is how victims of the secret services are labeled in these systems, because I think uh, you know he or she talked to an FBI agent who revealed this. Now, I have this uh, insight. So I know that patient is a cartel keyword for human experimentation subject or targeted victim. Now, when you read the sentence again, and you know it's about monitoring patients behind walls, you immediately know that what this says, it's, it's monitoring targeted individuals' movements from the other side of their, <clears throat> their flat wall or their house wall. That's what this technology is about. It says it right there at the top. And typically, in cartel literature and cartel movies, because psychopaths are very impatient people, it will say, the actual crux of the matter in the first couple of seconds of a film or on the first you know few inches on few few paragraphs of a of an article and everything you need to know is right there this is about mapping you in your private home through the wall from your neighbors um you know or maybe from other sensors on the other side of a wall now this entire talk about monitoring diseases this is monitoring the injuries that they give you with the directed energy weapons and it's about monitoring the um, synthetic uh, parasites uh, synthetic nanobots and maybe even bio warfare weapons that they will give you and then they want to monitor them so you know um <clears throat> what this is about it's about monitoring their human experimentation on your body and your daughters and your your sons and your babies through the wall from one of your corrupted neighbors. That's what this is about. Do you understand? And do you understand how you have to look past the badging and you have to recognize that certain buttons have been pu pushed in sequence, like smart home system, monitor diseases, help the elderly, like, what the fuck? What have smartphones and diseases and the elderly have to do with each other when you're talking about through the wall surveillance? But you're meant to be badged in the first subtitle, and then all the psychopaths who couldn't give a shit about the elderly and they don't have a response to, to uh, negative, aversive response to hospitals because they don't have, uh, you know, any emotions. 
and don't have a sense of risk, uh, you know, for to them it will be clear. Their brain works differently, and these things will be passed different differently, and they will under they will recognize the insider joke. They will immediately chuckle when they see the sequence and realize that smart homes have, not, have nothing to do with diseases, nothing to do with the with helping the elderly. And if they still didn't get it, help the elderly will be an insider joke to them, because among psychopaths, uh, normal people are an insider joke. You know, it's like they, they will laugh and they'll say, oh, yeah, you know, I mean, that's what they really always talk about, helping the elderly, you know, and they will giggle about it. And then I tell you, this is how it works. So if a psychopath reads this article from MIT News, especially when he's a cartel member, and typically it's a he, but not exclusively, okay? So it could be he or she. When they read that, they'll have a freaking grin on their face by the time they read the subtitle because they understand what this is about. They understand this is about actual human experimentation, which they will consider fun because it's about this sadistic, um, really fun and arousing you know, um, uh, hobby of torturing other people and then watching their funny uh, emotional responses, they'll understand that this is what it's about. They'll understand that it's a, the, the subtitle is for the normals and that it contains all these insider jokes. And they will immediately feel in on it and they will immediately feel that there's a group of people that have been subjugated and they will find that fun. Okay, and it will it will empower them to understand, and you understand why you have to have your wits about you. You need to know about the tricks that psychopaths pull on others. You need to know about badging, and you need to know about mirroring. And when you know about these things, and you're faced with this article, immediately in the first sentence, you know what this is about. Okay, I, I hope you really get it into your heads how important this is because once you understand this, the tricks of psychopaths, you can dismantle the entire Operation Mockingbird, um, you know, infiltration of the press and also of research science um, universities. Okay, and then if you have um, maybe had the time to go to my YouTube channel, okay, no, you didn't have the time and you didn't give a shit, right? Okay, so let's do it together. Um, go to my YouTube channel, type in YouTube, okay? Then you type in stop 007, okay, please? And then you go here, and if you still haven't educated yourself, you please go down to um, here, systems analysis basics, okay? And ideally, if you've got lots of time and you want to become a really clever cookie, you watch these three um, video series. But please do watch the systems analysis basics, okay? Because there I explain, if you haven't seen it yet, sorry, this is adverts, um, which I can skip in one second. Here you will see an organigram, and then in the very first um, video, I explain how capture works. And I explain at the very end how deep capture works, okay? And how psychopaths and criminals inf infiltrate systems. And as you're going up, with capture, the density of um, psychopaths will increase. I also explain in the second video how psychopaths um, behave and how you can recapture systems. And I explain system inversions and, sh and shedding and how to fight back, okay? These are really important video series and I'm doing it using systems analysis. And if you haven't understood everything I'm saying, you can really benefit from these videos. Please just watch them, okay? Now, these videos, you actually need to see the um, image. Typically, you can just download the MP3 of a video and listen to it on your way to work, you know, over your car radio. But um, <clears throat> when you un understood capture, you will understand that at the very top of most organizations, you will have a preponderance, a very high density of psychopaths. Now, when you're going to elite universities, they are very tapered to the top, very high, very stringent selection process. Um, and of course, it's selecting based on ability, academic ability. But most people ignore that because competition is so fierce, you know, I mean, among students, it's kind of like flat because they always try to get the brains in. OK, but when you get to the research staff, 
the people who get these places, they have to be very clever, but also there's a lot of infighting and backstabbing in the academic world as well. So the people who, who you will get at the top of elite universities will likely be psychopaths or have, have a very increased likelihood of being psychopaths. Now, what you also have, which you have to factor in, is the intel agencies <clears throat> who want to develop new um, weapons um, to kill people, new ways to kill people, and they work for the, um, for the um, arms industry, right? So they will be liaising between the arms industry and these research universities, and the intel people will know who the really psychopathic um, researchers are, and they will try to match them up with the arms industry to get all this business going, okay? When you have this in the back of your mind, which unfortunately I didn't when I worked for Oxford, if you know all this, if you've understood the systems analysis, if you understood psychopaths, and if you understood how Intel works, who they work for, and what they do, it is obvious as soon as you read Oxford or Cambridge or MIT, you have to think this is a bunch of fucking psychopaths out to kill. Think about it. Let, you know, ha have this as your first thought from now on when you're hearing about, oh, you know, Vanderbilt Un University or MIT Medical Center or Oxford Biomedical Lab. Think psychopaths out to kill. Okay. And then if you come across things where you really don't know how it could be weaponized, and you think, how on earth could I turn this bit of research into a way to kill people? I really don't know. Well, if you reach that, then it's probably just harmless researchers, probably not working for um, the arms industry, and probably they are genuinely people trying to do something good. But by now, I would have the reverse filter, okay? And this is how you should think. So this MIT, MIT article, good God, okay? Good fucking God. And even I sometimes have to go through and analyze it out loud to realize how bad it actually is, you know? I mean, as I was speaking to you just now, I realized, fuck me, it really is that bad, you know? I mean, I, I knew it's bad, that's why I picked it for the show, but now I actually talked, talked it through with myself about mirroring. I'm like, good God, maybe the journalist who wrote it is a psychopath. It's just too good, you know? Anyway, so you have to, you have to know this now. More education. And now when it's now, it's about um, really getting into the nitty gritty of it, okay? And this is now the moment when I want to talk to you about um, actually what to do about criminal psychopaths, okay? So I, I showed you all their harmful effects. I showed you how they bullshit you. Now I'll show you another example, which is very, very recent, okay? And um, I want to um, try to begin you know, this entire process of the working group of, okay, guys, what the fuck are we going to do about it? You know, what are the steps we need to take? Let me share the following video um, video with you, which is an interview about John Kiriakou. And he's talking about, um, you know, Julian Assange. And um, it's very, very topical. This video was uploaded um, just a few days ago. So today, as I'm speaking, it's the 21st of November. 24th of November and six days ago on the 18th of November, this video was uploaded by um, this account called Free Spirit. And it's uh, the title is John Kiriakou explains why Julian Assange cannot get a fair trial if extradited to the United States. Okay. So as you can see, I like that video and so should you do as well with everything that you like on the internet because then the um, videos get promoted by the algorithms much better and other people are much more likely to see them. Um, and then it's also a way to stick one up at the cartel, by the way. You know, if you all start just openly, fearlessly liking the most topical videos, then they also see that they have lost. Okay, so now I'll try to make it as loud as possible so that you, you can hear it, okay? Now, really, listen carefully to what John Kiriakou says because he's experienced in this field, okay? So he, um, he, was, he blew the whistle on torture, okay? And torture and extraordinary renditions, I think, um, but certainly torture by the US government at, um, you know, CIA sites. And he's a former CIA officer who was not willing to go along with the torture agenda you know okay so here we are famous whistleblower what does he have to say 
either Julian has been indicted in the Eastern District of Virginia or that a grand jury has been impaneled in the Eastern District of Virginia. The reason why this would be done in the Eastern District rather than in Washington, D.C. or any in any other district in the country is that the Eastern District of Virginia is known as the espionage court. No national security defendant has ever won a case there, ever. Um, I was tried there. Ed Snowden was charged there. Jeffrey Sterling was charged there. Um, we've all had our cases in the Eastern District of Virginia. There's one judge in particular, uh, Judge Leonie Brinkema, who reserves all of these cases for herself. So she's been the judge for all of us, and we were all found guilty. Beyond that, she made it literally impossible to mount a defense because every time we would motion the court to allow us to declassify information necessary to defend ourselves, she denied the motion. She denied 72 of my motions and approved zero. We were walking out of the courtroom one day, and I said to my attorney, what just happened? And my attorney said, we just lost the case. That's what happened. Well, Julian is looking at the same kind of outcome. If he's forced out of that embassy and extradited to the United States, he will not, he cannot get a fair trial. Okay. Now, I um, this is from the uh, Unity for j vigil that Susie Dawson is running for um, Julian Assange. I'm not sure how good the um, audio quality was. Um, so. Um, you know, if sometimes when you are trying to broadcast um, something that's recorded elsewhere, you know, it's it's feedback, feedback, feedback. So it could be that the audio was jittery or it kind of truncated and the, the um, video was jittery. And I'm sorry about that. So I will stick the um, link below, you know, uh, you can look at it. If you're watching this offline, you can, uh, or, you know, not live, you can just pause the video and just listen to this yourself, the entire video and make up your own mind now about the entire thing. I played a minute and a half from a five minute clip um, and really start thinking about, um, you know, what, um, what you think, what you discover, what you think about this, what your uh, conclusions are. And typically when I'm watching these things, by now I'm, I'm running, you know, different threads of analysis, left, right and center. And they're kind of like, oh, woo, 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 you know, and I'm thinking about five things in parallel. So my conclusions when I see these videos might be completely different to yours. And um, ideally, if you agree with my methods of analysis, you train yourself up to also have this multi-threaded analysis approach as you're watching stuff, you know, to really have the same data uh, analysis output at the end of it, you know. Or maybe you have better ideas of how to analyze this sort of stuff. And uh, you come to different conclusions because you have better insights or different insights and so on. Okay, so let me now show you how I'm analyzing these videos and um, the sort of things I'm thinking about in the back of my head. Okay, and the first thing you need to know about John Kiriakou is that he went to jail. He went to jail for standing up, not, you know, for not torturing people and blowing the whistle on this torture program. That's what the entire story with John Kiriakou is about, okay? So in the back of my mind, I already log that, you know, I think this is well established that he went to jail. I don't think there was any, and I'm not aware of any Masonic tricks having been pulled. I think he was genuinely in jail, okay? I don't know that much about the details. I think he also wrote a book about his time in jail. Well, I haven't read that. I don't have any data on it. So for now, I'll just take that on trust. He genuinely went to jail. There's no cartel bullshit being pulled. Yes, he worked for the CIA, but yes, he blew the whistle at a tremendous cost to himself and his family. And I think he also has um, you know, several children himself. So going to jail for a very long time is uh, you know, devastating. So I will take that to be a man who has actually faced up to the cartel at a tremendous personal cost to uh, for himself and his family okay so on one hand cia to me means crown corporation organized crime cartel but i will kind of factor in that this guy was not fully full hog a member of the crime cartel or else he wouldn't have incurred that um terrible personal cost and it's pretty much the same argument that I also presented yesterday when discussing Ted Gunderson. If Ted Gunderson was really a corrupt individual, as the CIA's Barbara Hartwell is trying to suggest to us, why the fuck is he dead? 
And why the hell was he poisoned in such a horrific manner over eight years, right? That his personal doctor noticed. And why was he blowing the whistle on all this horrific Satanism and pedophilia that back in the day was a total no-no to say and really got you killed, okay? So now factor all these in and, and be aware that I am aware that this is how I'm thinking about John Kiriakou, but let's now go back and analyze the video and pull out everything about it. Now, number one, when I'm watching videos, especially when it's from CIA agents, um, <clears throat> CIA agents talking and presenting themselves to the media, this is by now a bias I have. I assume that if you are a senior agent of the CIA and you were in charge of, uh, you know, the Pakistan office or running the Pakistan operations of the CIA, I just have this base assumption that you know about cartel signaling. Now, I don't know how true that is, okay? Now, I, I really start to question my assumptions when I hear John Kiriakou who I will show to you seems to be either very cunning or totally oblivious to the to the functioning of the cartel to this very day. In which case, I think him listening to my video might actually open his eyes, right? And only he knows who he really is. So if he really hasn't unlearned cartel signaling, I think I can teach him something that will amuse him, okay? Now, because he actually pulled out and he was not torturing people and he actually incurred the tremendous personal cost of going to jail for refusing to torture people and for blowing the whistle on other people in the CIA torturing people, I actually think it's very likely that he's totally oblivious to the fact that he actually worked all his life for an organized crime cartel. And there are other interviews with him where I think that's actually likely. It could very well be that to this day, John Kiriakou still hasn't understood that he's worked for the Crown Corporation, which is the biggest organized crime cartel in the world. All right. Now, if that's true and he's completely oblivious, it would explain why he goes on a broadcast, which is about unity for Julian, wearing a T-shirt where I can see a satanic pentagram right there. And it's not just any old satanic pentagram. It's what what's called a Leninist star. Now, Lenin, as I said many times, was a cartel insider who was trained and, you know, set up for what he had to do by his handlers in Zurich, Switzerland. Okay. Lenin worked in Zurich. That's where he developed his so-called ideas. And if you ever come to Zurich, I can tell you the very, I can show you the house he lived in. It's marked, okay, with a blue plaque or with a whatever plaque the Swiss put on. I can't remember. So anyway, but it's it's marked. I think it's a brass plaque. I have seen the house. Now, what you have to take away from this is that Lenin worked for the global crime cartel and therefore the entire Leninist Marxist nonsense is a cartel thing. Now, in the episode Global Crime Fighters, right, in a previous episode, I have showed you the obelisks, it was about the spread of the global crime cartel. Now, if I can get, pull it up very quickly, obelisk Moscow, I can show you what I mean. Now, there's one obelisk here next to the Kremlin, but there's one other, oh, maybe it's St. Petersburg. Yeah, I think it's at St. Petersburg obelisk. Yes. Yes, the one I'm thinking about is the Leningrad Hero City Obelisk. Yeah, catchy. Well, I guess the one I want to show you is this uh, Masonic dick, okay? The way I remember it is the Masonic dick. Now, the Masonic dick in St. Petersburg has the Masonic Obelisk, and at the very top, the Leninist star. If you look carefully on the Wikipedia image, you will see the star. Maybe I can blow it up. Okay, it's this star at the very top. So now that I know that this is the one I mean, let me just show you better images of it. Maybe there's a zoom. Yes, this one, this star. This is a satanic pentagram. And if you are looking at it at the distance, because the way that the star, the sun shines on it, it will look like it has these triangles, like a dark side and the light side of the triangle. You can see it here, a light side and a dark side. Now that's a Leninist star. 
okay, in the Muggles world, in the world of, world of the normals, this is a Leninist star, a symbol of the, you know, Russian communist system, and then, then the Stalinist purges that followed. But when you understand cartel signaling, you know that this is just a simple, plain satanic pentagram, okay? It's just the same bloody pentagram that's on all uh, the US flags 50 times, and it's also here. And the entire connection of this satanic pentagram to the US is the connection over the cartel, over the Washington Monument. You know, why the fuck do you have a little copy of the Washington Monument in St. Petersburg? If you did, you ever ask yourself this? Why does St. Petersburg have the same stone dick as the Washington Monument? Of course, if you watched my, you know, this is the Washington Monument here. And this is the St. Petersburg Monument. Why do they look the same? One is communist Russia. The other one is, hey, the land of the so-called free. You know? Well, the connection is that both of them are Masonic obelisks. They are the symbol of the crime cartel, okay? Now, this at the very top is this, as I, as I explain, it's this uh, Leninist star, otherwise known as a satanic pentagram, otherwise known as a symbol of the cartel. So imagine my surprise when I'm seeing John Kuriaku with the Leninist pentagram or the satanic pentagram on his chest in this video. Why, why the hell? John, if you work for the CIA, mate, don't wear a fucking Masonic satanic pentagram on your t-shirt when you're going on a show for Unity for J. You know, I mean, literally, good God. I mean, this was just, um, the guy comes across as so genuine and said, says such important stuff that I really believe he's genuine. But when he does stuff like that, I really realize he, he hasn't understood who his employer was to this day. I mean, good God, please somebody give me his email address so that I can enlighten him. It's like, John, you, you come on the show with cartel signaling on the middle of your chest. Don't do this, okay? So this is what I thought. Please, John, like just wisen the fuck up. But anyway, now the other thing that when he's talking, listen carefully. District of Virginia. Okay, so here. Uh, the, the rumor is that either Julian has been indicted in the Eastern Dis District of Virginia or that a grand jury has been impaneled in the Eastern District of Virginia. Okay, remember the Eastern District of Virginia. Very important. This is now important whistleblowing that John Kuriaku uh, does that is important for the upcoming court cases and for shutting down the crime cartel. The Eastern District of Virginia, guys, remember that. Write it down now in your court bundle. The Eastern District of Virginia has to be mentioned in your court cases. The reason why this would be done in the Eastern District rather than in Washington, D.C. or any in any other district in the country is that the Eastern District of Virginia is known... Stop. Did you guys see this? You're probably not trained in the methods of the cartel, but the cartel has two symbolisms that turn, turn up all the time that are connected. Number one is the obelisk. And I've showed you this St. Petersburg obelisk with this star on. And the second one at the top of the obelisk is the pyramid. And inside the pyramid is the all-seeing eye. So the cartel uses the symbol of the all-seeing eye. And for those people who are blissfully, you know, unaware and new to this thing, let me show you the all-seeing eye symbol. That is the thing that's on the dollar bill, the one dollar bill, this all-seeing eye. Okay, that's what we're talking about. That is the all-seeing eye. And as you can see, it's the very tip of the pyramid. And there is the, the pyramid, the bit of the obelisk that tapers. And then there's this bit that det detaches, and then there's the all-seeing eye. Do you remember the obelisk of the LAPD that had just this rump here of the pyramid and the top bit was missing? That's the all-seeing eye, the Illuminati bit, the real insider bit. It was missing from the LAPD. Let's just have a look at it again. LAPD Police Department. Okay, where's the images? This one. I mean, this one. There. If you look carefully at the very top, 
that bit is missing. So here's the obelisk. That's the shaft, guys. Okay, that's the shaft. And this bit is the League of Dickheads. Okay. And here, the LAPD, even though it has both testicles and even seems to have a foreskin, but then again, I, I'm not an expert, right? Here at the very top, the, the top bit is missing. And that top bit is the all seeing eye. Okay. Now, if you think I just have a fetish with dicks, you're wrong. No, this is genuinely how it is, guys, okay? This is what the cartel signaling means. And you will always see the pyramid or the beginning of a pyramid with the top, top missing. And what this means is that the LAPD, even though it's Masonic, it's inside the cartel, it's not at the top of the cartel. Now, when you're talking about police departments, this is typically how it is. You will have the sun symbol behind them, Vatican intel, the Jesuits behind them, not inside them, because they are lackeys of Jesuit intel. When you have intel agencies, they will have the symbol of the all-seeing eye, the actual eye. So the police is missing the eye, and intel has the eye in it because they're higher up in the cartel. I can prove that to you right now by taking you to the website of the Bundesnachrichtendienst. This is German Intel, Bundesnachrichtendienst.de. <clears throat> okay, now look at this and tell me where is the all seeing? Oh shit, they changed the website, the bastards. The fuckers changed the website because you know why they changed the website, these little cocksuckers? Because I actually complained about it. And I showed the all seeing eye. I made it, I turned them into a total farce. So I actually have to go back to um, the way back machine. So, um, <clears throat> way back machine. It's very funny when I, when I exposed the, um, the cartel symbolism of the German embassy in, in Bern, they changed their website. And when I exposed the Bundesnachrichtendienst, they changed the website after 30 years. So yeah, let's go to Bundes, uh, Bundesnachrichtendienst.de. Please, I'm sure you have a copy. Of course you have a copy. Now let's go back to 2017, okay? And I can prove to you that even last year, in April, they had a different website. Okay, so now they're bringing up the old copy. <laughs> got a got an error, yeah. All right, uh, then give me the site in 2016. What? Okay, why why are the copies hidden now? Oh, it's still loading, is it? Anyway, okay, so wh while this is loading, maybe I need a bit more patience, okay? I will show you while we're waiting for this. Okay, loading, loading, loading. Impatient, yeah, I am. Oh yeah, here we are, okay, thank you. Now this is a copy of the website as it was on the 26th of um, April, 2017. And you can immediately see the symbols of the all seeing eye, top right, and remember most people are right-handed so they will look to the right first. You will see a symbol of the all seeing eye, why? Because Intel is high up in the crime cartel. And it's all about, yeah, we're watching you all the time and that sort of knob yanking, okay? But look, it's not just the all-seeing eye. On the left, you will have a symbol of the sun right at the heart of the big dish, as in the big all-seeing eye, SIGINT, okay? All-seeing eye, but the sun is right in there at the heart of the all-seeing eye. And what this means, people, in terms of cartel signaling, the sun being the Jesuit symbol, remember? Jesuit logo, this thing, they are the sun. The Jesuits are Vatican intel. They are the enforcement arm, the surveillance arm of the Vatican crime cartel. So the sun represents, the Jesuits represent Vatican intel. Now here you have the, the, the watching, the satellite dish, and at the heart of it, Vatican intel. Now what these images here tell you as German intel here, is the all-seeing eye, right? They are the top of, or they're very close to the top of the pyramid, and they are Jesuit intel. 
it says it right there at the top. And why does it say it at the top? Well, that's because psychopaths are impatient people. They don't like, you know, ninning around. And typically they want to know what this is about, you know, just looking at it at a glance. Right? And there it is. We're the all-seeing eye. Vatican Intel. Right there. This is German Intel for it, German Bundesnachrichtendienst for you. By the way, as I keep saying to embarrass them, these were also analog signals. And I pointed out to these dickheads that the world is now digital, so having analog signals on your web page looks really shit. And I pointed it out in 2017 many, many times, and so now they changed the website. Thank fuck. Now let's have a look at their website, what it's um, what it looks like. Let's go back to Bundesnachrichtendienst. And look at what they put up now. And it actually shows that they were listening because now what meets you, so that not even I can miss it, is look, data, the interconnectedness of data, data mapping, graphing. So, hey, to me, what you guys are saying, dear German Intel, is that you stole Bill Binney's program, ThinThread, and you're now using that to do our graphs. You're graphing social data. That's what you're showing me. And um, if I'm not mistaken, I seem to see the silhouette of Brazil and the silhouette of the US. So you, by just showing me this image, tell me that you guys in Germany are actually focusing on American graphing data as an NSA data. So what you guys are telling me is that German Intel has access to the NSA data and you're basing your operations mostly on that because you're focusing on the US and Germany is somewhere there where you couldn't really give a shit. So it looks like you're focusing on the node between the US East Coast and this data stream going through underground cable that's clearly tapped by the NSA, you know, tapped to shits, I would say, between the East Coast and Europe. Okay, that's what I thought you did, BND, and now you tell me here in one go. This is how quickly you can understand what the world is about if you understand cartel signaling. Okay, now this is just German intel. You could claim this is just coincidence, but no, it isn't. Because if I go back and if I now show you an image of GCHQ, there's the all-seeing eye in the form of a camera. In form of a camera. And I'm kind of freaked out that they have this thing with the poppy going on because um, I explained what poppies are and cartel signaling. But anyway, you have to understand this. The all-seeing eye is an intel symbol. Okay? Did you get it into your head now? And the all-seeing eye and cartel signaling is another trick that psychopaths pull on you which is pathological lying so psychopaths will be pathologically lying to the normals while while saying what they actually want to say to all the genuine people okay are you still following oh good god there are more people following that i would have expected at 4 50 a.m in the morning in europe and that you know really late in the u.s thanks guys now let me make it worth your while okay because I really want to go somewhere with this. But before I do so, let me just check that you can still hear me. All the company. Okay, you can you can hear me. And um, let me just do one more check. There's the old thing on. Okay, yes, you can still hear me. So now the thing is, um, let me make it worth uh, your while and let me make it worth uh, the while of senior intel agents, what I'm about to um, show you, okay? Because I don't know, I don't know what's going on with John Kiriakou. Um, he's either a cartel member and shows us in our face, or he's so utterly clueless that by accident, you know, he just uh, does all the moves of the intel agencies and maybe he doesn't actually understand what he's trying to tell us. I mean, you know, if he knew what he was saying, he would not be appearing on the vigil, vigil for Julian doing the moves and wearing that T-shirt, okay? So here we are. Now, dear senior intel agents, if you're really that clueless, this is what you need to know. He is a CIA agent. He just flashed the satanic pentagram at me, okay? Which could be by mistake because the cartel does put their satanic pentagrams on all the t-shirts. You know, it's kind of like cattle branding. So it could be just coincidence. But now look, when he's talking about it, 
what he does in a very few seconds of this video, and I'll play it without sound, just watch his body language. As he's talking, he raises his eyes, his hand to his eyes, and he pushes up his glasses. <clears throat> now, because I'm so uber sensitized to this, touching your eye or pushing up your glasses for me is already a heads up for an all seeing eye symbol. Okay. It's already kind of like pointing at your eyes and um, emphasizing your eyes with one hand. Look at it again. This is not cartel signaling in itself. It's far too, you know, accidental. But that one, that movement can already be cartel signaling. So it put me on my guard, okay? So what this meant to me in terms of cartel signaling is watch for the all-seeing eye. Now, because he's CIA, Intel, I'm already watching for the all-seeing eye, especially when I see the pentagram. So let's see what happens. Now, as he's talking, let's listen to what he says again, okay, when he does that. In Washington, D.C. or any in any other district in the country is that the Eastern District of Virginia. Look at this. Did you see that? Did you see the blink? The Eastern District of Virginia is. That's when he's blinking. In the Eastern District, rather than in Washington, D.C. or any in any other district in the country, is that the Eastern District of Virginia. Did you see that? The Eastern District of Virginia. Is the Espionage Court. No national security defendant has ever won a case there. Ever. Um, I was tried there. Look, I was tried there and he wipes, he covers one eye. That's the all seeing eye symbol, gay, the guys. I was tried there and I see a symbol for the all seeing eye, which means I was tried there working for the cartel. Ed Snowden was charged. Ed Snowden was charged there and he wipes his eye again saying the word Ed Snowden. I was like, fuck me, John. I mean, if this is coincidence, you're really unlucky to pull this off in a row because I'm now trained to read cartel signaling in parallel. And what you're saying is that both you and Edward, you know, and Snowden work for the cartel. I mean, come on, please, you know. No security defendant has ever won a case there, ever. Um, I was tried there. Ed Snowden was charged there. Jeffrey Sterling was charged there. So, literally, when I'm reading this uh, and I'm and I'm watching this, what I'm what all this is is priming me for, and the priming is exactly what it is in terms of Intel technique and its effect on me is it's priming me to think that both John Kiriakou and Ed Snowden work for the cartel, which again just doesn't make any freaking bit of sense right so i just got a you know kind of like a, a deductive little breakdown in my head when i saw that because i was like hang on the cartel signaling tells me this but the reality and the facts of the matter tell me that i mean come on ed snowden actually fled the country and he can't come back home so you know he that story doesn't make any sense and and you wouldn't really come on a vigil for julian assange doing cartel signaling and flashing, you know, satanic pentagrams. So literally, hand on my heart, I don't know what the fuck's going on with John Kiriakou. I mean, maybe he was working for the CIA for so long, he has just adopted all these symbols like barristers working in psychopathic environments and adopt a, you know, a psychopath's poker face just to cope. And he's just, without realizing that this is what he does, he just got into the habit of rubbing one of his eyes because it kept all the other psychopaths at bay thinking, oh, he's a cartel insider. Maybe this is how he managed to rise to, um, you know, what's it called, chief of station in Pakistan or whatever the hell he was. He just kept rubbing one eye because he actually has an itchy eye and everyone's like, oh, he's really high up in the cartel, you know. We didn't know he's that high. Uh, you know, we better promote him. I, I don't know, maybe that happens, you know. But I was just like, Jesus. Uh, typically, this is what it means, okay. Typically, if somebody covers one of their eyes really emphatically while saying names, it means that those people are implied to be members of the cartel. If Hollywood movie stars go like, you know, and let themselves be photographed in a staged photograph, it means they are working for the crime cartel. That's how they got rich and famous. And it also implies that these people went over dead bodies to get there. Okay. Now, with John, the entire story is that he blew the whistle on something we wouldn't have known about if he hadn't told us. So just like Ted Gunderson, he put his life at risk, his family life, his kid's life at risk, 
by doing that. So you don't do that when you're really high up in the cartel. So I, but John Kiriakou, I, I really think he's genuinely clueless. I, so far, maybe evidence accumulates that he is paid, you know, I don't know. And he's now trying to save the life of his children by becoming a member of the cartel and start flashing cartel symbols and being really two-faced. I don't know what's going on, guys. But, uh, you know, either way, this is confusing like hell. But it's good educational material. Now, let's forget about cartel signaling. This is just one of the threads of investigation I'm running in my head when I'm watching this. Now, let's get back to factual, okay? So forget about cartel signaling, about hand signs, about the history going back to St. Petersburg and Lenin and the Masons. Forget all that. Now comes a new, completely fresh and independent, factual, content-based analysis about what he actually says. And I want to focus on that because there is super important whistleblowing happening there that we can really use. And this is why I'm so confused about John Kiriakou flashing cartel signaling at me. You know, some people genuinely don't know and they will just do, you know, devil's horns and all seeing eyes and they just don't even know what it means. So, you know, I mean, if you do the telephone symbol, you know, like this, oh, I just called somebody, it's the devil horns, guys, right? I mean, both this and this is the devil horns. The, sim the, the symbol for telephone, what's the connection to devil's horns? Well, remember that telephone lines were the first ones to be put under surveillance by the crime cartel, otherwise known as the intelligence agencies. So, of course, if you wanted to pass a message and you knew that the cartel is surveying it, you could speak in coded language doing, you know, the verbal version of cartel signaling over the line and you would indicate to somebody that you're on the phone right now. And it sounds like you're talking to your Auntie Jane, but the code words you're using, Auntie Jane doesn't understand, and you're talking to your crime cartel, telling them, yeah, I finished the guy off. Pay me now because I've done the hit job. This is where it traditionally comes from, okay? So all these symbols like telephone actually have links to intel and surveillance into the crime cartel, which is why they also happen to be the devil's horns, you know? Similarly, the victory sign that Churchill flashed up, is actually the Templar V, it's the Masonic double pillars, right? It's the two business plans of fucking and killing, which there was rather a lot about in the Second World War. So Churchill showing you this already tells you he was a Mason, he was in on it, and he was part of this entire Second World War staged mass murder, otherwise known as ritual human sacrifice, otherwise known as Satanism. And history becomes clear, okay? now. This, let's forget all this baggage, let's forget all the symbols, and let's go back to content analysis, okay? Now, what exactly is John Kiriakou blowing the whistle on here? Because this is important, guys. It's more important than any cartel symbolism, and I really appreciate it. Listen to it. Either Julian has been indicted in the Eastern District of Virginia, or that a grand jury has been impaneled in the Eastern District of Virginia. The reason why this would be done in the Eastern District, rather than in Washington DC or any in any other district in the country, is that the Eastern District of Virginia is known as the espionage court. No national security defendant has ever won a case there, ever. Okay. The Eastern District of Virginia is known as the espionage court. Now, I know a thing or five about espionage courts. In the UK, the espionage court is um, the investigatory powers, investigatory powers Tribunal, which is a fake court. It's a total cartel court. It's a court by the global crime cartel to cover up crimes against humanity. And I'm sorry for any genuine judge who is on the IPT, right? Um, for example, Judge Edis heard my case on the second day. I had the feeling he's a genuine judge and he's now sitting on the IPT. I hope he is aware that he's right in the, the center of the shitstorm and the people surrounding him, including the staff, are intel agents, psychopaths probably out to get him and subvert all of his court cases. As, soon, as long as he knows, he should be fine because he can take measures. If people don't know and think that's a normal court, they don't know what they walk into as much as I didn't know what I'm walking into when I went to hospital Erasmus with Melanie. I 
thought I'm surrounded by doctors, I was surrounded by intel agents, I think. If, uh, you know, Judge Edith walks into the investigatory past tribunal thinking he's surrounded by normal court staff, right, by normal clerks and um, other genuine judges and barristers and maybe support staff, he's not. He's walking into the HQ or the, you know, outpost of MI6 with all the serial killers and psychopaths and saboteurs surrounding him. So how do I know? Well, it's because the IPT fucked up my case pretty phenomenally. But if you go to my website, Stop007, I can give you hardcore evidence that I'm also going to show in court, which means that you can show it in court as well. So um, if you go here, stop007.org, and you scroll down to the research library, okay, you will find something here under evidence of systemic corruption. The first document that meets you is the IPT corruption. Now, this is a little um, document where I'm using systems analysis and the statistics of the IPT itself to prove that it's a captured court. And I'm using the statistic here that was published on the IPT's website, and I give the link here in the... Um, I should, yeah, I think I gave the link. Oh, yes, here. Here's the link to the IPT, which used to have the statistics showing how many complaints they received and how many were decided in the fav in favor of the complainant. When you just do the simplest maths, you realize that the um, according to their own um, statistics, they are turning away 99% of the cases. Okay, so in a thousand one hundred and fourteen cases, only ten were decided in the in the favor of, of the complainant. So when when a court, you when you have a court case, okay, typically you have you know base assumption. Let's just do the math. 